Welcome back YouTube. We are back with another jobbing episode. Currently out and about on a Friday afternoon. We just had a job and it's supposed to be one of them jobs. You know, when a customer sends you, you think, yes, this is going to be a nice, easy job. Book that in. Friday afternoon, what can go wrong? Everything. Of course, everything can go wrong. It's a Friday afternoon job. But there's also some jobbing jobs in there. Just pull them all together and make it into an episode for you. So I hope you enjoy. As always, thank you very much for your support. Really, really appreciate it. If you've got any questions, drop them in the comments. I'll do my best to answer them. Make sure you give the video a thumbs up and click subscribe. It's free and it really helps me out. It really does. So yeah, let's take another look at a day in my life. All right, nice, easy job. This is side entry fill valve. The water is off, should be. There we go. through like that. Tighten him on. Get him started. Back on. Right. Now I've got that started. Tighten him up. It's going to be loose now. So, if you get this situation, what you can do is this. Get your old nut. That's the old nut. That's the old nut. Put the old nut back on. Put the washer back on. And feed it through. That'll give you the space then to get that back on. There you go. That ceiling washer is massive. Just give that hand tight. Turn that around to there. That's it. You can just use that there to just level for whatever you want. Happy days. Like I say, quick and easy is to replace side entry fill valve. Which you want. Really good on price. I do like the vape stuff. There we go. So the fill level, you just take from there whatever fill level you want. I'm just going to try and match it up to the old one. See how we get on. Also, if we don't want to match it up to the old fill level, because that was going down the old flow. But we've just adjusted it now. It's where we want it. Oh, that's tight. A bit of tight flush there. There you go, all of us really. I think a five minute job is going to turn into a good five minute job. But... Damn it. So I've got the water back off. What I'm thinking is, if I want to do the screws here, get my arm in there, undo that knot, I can take the whole thing out. So I really want it. I don't want to take it all out. I really don't. So, <sighs> try to find a job turns into another job. Oh, you gotta love it. <sighs> You're gonna see this, but I'm gonna get my arms there. easy access to get in there now. Let's put that down the toilet. Alright, let's get to work on this. We've got a flower master on that. Should feel beautiful. Alright, new one all in place. Let's get it back in. Over. It's all tight. Let's get these screws back in and get it tested again. You know, then ones that you take on, you like, yeah, yeah, no worries, I'll pop my hands all that. And you think to yourself now, could be at home. Right, cross everything and break down leak. 
That thing's moisture. Great. All right, for my sanity, the sake of the customer's window, because I was about to throw that out of it, I managed to get in there, tighten it up, and it's fine now. Thank God, I flushed it about 10 times and it's all dry. There we go. Always, always, Friday asked me angel. The one that you said, I'll do that on my way out. So I didn't show you a valve, should have been five minutes job turning to a nightmare because it's off and gone, but new ones all in, all done. Just got a shelf, sometimes five minutes job turning to a nightmare. So if you remember, not so long ago, I was here, I was doing a power flush on this system, cleaned all the system out, and I was going to fit radiator this time, well, on the day, but we run out of time, so I'll be back. To fit it, so yeah, I mean, say, fit this tail bed. Uh, see what we're doing. See, there's some part work alteration, mate. What we're gonna do is line it up with that valve there. Um, it's 1200 by 600. We've got a draining down now, which makes so much easier with that shut off valve there. Just turn that off, put it on a drain valve. Yeah, just drain it down. Um, now, to get the where we want to put the brackets, it's easy enough. You can probably see there's a mark there, mark there. All I've done is just offer the radiator up to the wall. It's a nice and light these, and we can just push them against the wall, and mark the top, mark the bottom. All I'm going to do is get my spirit level out, line across, line across, down, down. That'll be all lined up, and I can drill them holes while I'm waiting for the system to drain. And at the moment, it's so what I mean, it's roasting at the moment, um, so it feels like every step I'm taking, it feels like about 10. But yeah, I'm glad this is. A relatively easy job because I said it is a bit hard, but yeah, let's get cracking with it. Screws them all drilled now. Just gonna start taking these apart, and then I'll come in a pack like that. The hanging brackets, we just want these for now, and the screws, wherever I put them down here. So, I'll show you how to fit these. Dead simple once you've drilled your holes out, washer, screw through there, line them up. You can go into there like that. Let's get my screwdriver. Press in there, screw them up. You use the impact if you want, but I don't like normally using the impact on told walls. It don't take that long with a good screwdriver. Right, that one's all in tight. Now you'll notice there's a little hole on the bottom of it there. You want to get that so you can get access to it. And so it's a bit unsightly as well, that screw, so to get it on the bottom at the bottom there, or you can bottom at the top, whichever one you want. Just make sure you can get onto it. Then put your screw in. And you can do this after if you want, but it's a little bit hard with the radiator in place. So there we go. So we're just going to put him in the bottom. So we started. There we go, that's all in. Just gonna do one for every four of them now. We'll just pour it straining down and the radiator will be hung. All right, now we've got all them on, nice and level. We're gonna put these in. So, through there, with that one. From bracket on, screw in, but just leave it loose. Leave it loose, and when you've got all four in, you just get it then, lift it on, put it in. Dead easy. Tail wells and dead easy. Right, now all them are on. I just line it up with these. Push it in. Right off to the edge. Get as much tail on there as we can. I'm just going to line up the bottom. Go straight in. Go on. There we go. Right. That's all in. I'm right on the edges. Just tighten them up. Another thing to do as well before you hang the rod is make sure most of the valves are on the bottom. I have actually fitted it where them valves up on the top. Filled it all up. Just about to go and start crap. I fitted it the wrong way around. Can happen. Can happen. You only do it once though. Right, and you want to tighten the screws up now once you put it in place. So make sure it's all level. There we go. Let's pop them off actually. 
spirit level. It's all fine. All fine, all level. That's it all hung. So now we'll go sort of the pipe work. So we can uh, get into the valve. We're going to have to put a... Um, I don't know if I'll get a kick on that because it's a bit for a short gap. Uh, yeah, might have to be elbow and then in. That one across and up. We'll have a look in a minute. I've got to get the fan out of the van. I am screaming up. Yeah, it's a little bit hot today. Just before we have a coffee break, might as well get the valves set in. So with these, I'll just tighten them up. We'll get some rapid blue. I think this one's running out a bit. Just wang it on, just wang it on. There's a bit on there. Get the dirt coming out the bottle then. And this has to be clean and dry to put it on, so. There we go. Probably a bit too much, but it'll be alright. Just gonna tighten him in. Do I'm up and just give him a white round. There you go, should be fine. Rinse and repeat for the other side. There we go. Both the valves all in. This is how I normally like to do mine. I like to, if they um, got a kick out of the wall, I'll put the kick here. Now, some people put the kick there, but I just think it looks better. Kick there. Um, I took the old nut off, cleaned it all up. Um, so yeah, we've got to flux it up and that side is all in. Well, I was going to show you how I sold that, but some alkaline's cheering me on again, so I'm going to cut, I'm going to cut that one down, so I don't think you'll be able to see me do that, but you can see me take this nut off, I suppose. So, oh God, wiggle that nut out the best we can. Got some of these olive cutters. Just put that over, line it up with the olive. Go take that nut down a bit more, come on. There we go. Line it up with the olive and just push. Split the olive. And it should. Oh, that word should. Come off. Nut's going to be a bit tight. There we go. I'm going to use some strip just to clean that up. Get ready for solving. That one's all plumbed in. That's a long one. Radius straight, then we're really useful to get. So I'll just have to deal with that, and then we'll come straight across there. I've got the radiator off. I'm just going to put some mini between through here. Um, I'll fill it all up, check for leaks, and then I can open up the radiant inhibitor, should go around the system. Then we can test the system for uh, make sure we've got enough inhibitor and the corrosion levels. It's so normally after a flush, that's what I do. I normally do an 80 pro check to make sure there's enough inhibitor, the corrosion levels have gone, and I've cleaned the system properly. But obviously, because I was coming back to the rad. There's no point in putting in between, so I thought I'd do the test once I've done this right. So in between, and we'll get it filled up. Right, that's the vents all shut. Let's get it filled up. Oh, hold on. Yeah, I forgot about that one. All right, so I filled it all up, tested for leaks. Everything looks absolutely fine. That's the radiator all done. The system's been on. It's lovely and nice. Now, some, someone asked me in the last comments, how do I check my systems? I use one of these. 80 Pro checks, what you do. Take a sample of water. Now, don't take it from the radiator that you put the in between, you'll get a false reading. Take it from the like, furthest radiator away. So, you take a sample, it'll ask you to take a photo of it, and then you put your samples, uh, your dip, dip in to test it. And then, what you do, there's an app, an ID app. You put your sample on there, just like that, on that side, where it tells you to fingers and thumbs here but you just put it on there then it'll ask you to scan it you take a scan with that on the app and it'll tell you the corrosion levels and inhibitor levels and the ph levels now i do a lot using the 81 because it does give you an email report you can send to the customer now sometimes it can be a little bit tricky sometimes the photo won't take for some reason but the reason i like using the 80 file check is because you get the email report you send that to the customer they know then you've done the the check and you've got a future reference so 80 pro check, about 100 quid, I think. I think 100 quid that was when I bought it with the, um, the sample strips. You can buy more than them sample strips with a bit less, but 
little bit on the price side, but I do like it. What does everybody else use? Let me know in the comments what you use to test us out like that because it gives you the report and it's just proof then that you have done it. But that one, all done. This one is a tap change. It's one of them annoying ones though where it's got the pop-up waste built into it. I don't like doing these, really don't. First thing I'm going to do is get the trap out of the way, get access nice and clear for us. Dump that out of the way, then we're going to try and get the trap out and it was all corroded in, so a bit of brute force. We just snapped it out of the way. Undone it and that was the old waste out. And these are a bit different to your normal traps. You'll see why a bit later on. So I'll get them out of the way, then we can look at disconnecting the tap. You see that it's all corroded in and rusted up, so this is going to be fun. So we're going to disconnect the isolation valve. Now be careful, sometimes these braided hoses can be a bit sharp. And when I pull this one out, yeah, I've got a bit of a splinter in my finger. Now this is where this set comes into force, the Nervad Tepex kit. Now I absolutely love my kit. It makes doing taps an absolute doddle. So I'm just going to undo the back nut, then we can get the old tap pulled out and out the way. Then we're going to give the area a nice clean up, ready to fit the new waist and the tap. So first of all, we're going to put the new tap together. So we're just going to put the holes in there. When you do the hoses, they only need to really go in hand tight. Don't tighten them up with a spanner or nothing, you'll end up splitting the R-ring. Then you're going to put the bolts in. Get them ready to go in. Give them a tighten up. Then take off the brass nuts because this is what's going to fix the tap to the underside. So I'm just going to make sure I've got the right socket on my Tapex kit before I try and do this. So you don't want to be messing around afterwards trying to figure out what size nut it is. And then underneath, this is how it goes on. So you can imagine the taps through and it goes washer, plate, unlock that. Then your two bolts go on and that will firmly fix your tap into place. So what we're going to do now is feed the hoses down the sink. Yes, I do call a base and the sink on from the Black Country. Then we've got the fun task then of working blind. Because basically what I'm going to do now is put my hand under and tighten the bolts up. But don't forget to put that lever in first. Because you won't get it in afterwards because it's at the back and it goes in at an angle. So I'll wash that plate. Then you can put your two nuts on. Get them tightened up by hand. Then get the tap kit in there and get them tightened there. Don't go bonkers because you can end up actually bending that plate so you don't really you just want it tight enough so the tap don't move and the flexes that come with the tap them should be long enough just to go straight back onto our isolation valves now they're not flat faced and they're not so we don't want to go too mad when we tighten them up now we've got to go on now to fit in the pop-up waist so that bit will just screw together to extend the arm then we're just going to take the trap apart take the washers off then we can set it up on the lever so you just want to push that through there, tighten it in, and that's the arm mechanism that's going to move up and down. It connects onto like a pivot. You have to tighten them in with a screwdriver. It is too long because it will fit quite a few things in it, so they give you a longer arm. You can just cut that down, put your top section in, then your bottom section will just tighten in. Obviously, you got to make sure that the part where it connects onto is facing the back. So you can just slide that up into the hole and tighten it up. Let me using this out. It's a weaver new weaver kit that we've been using. It's really handy for job being jobs to be fair. I have enjoyed using that. Once all that's in place and get the trap back on, tighten it all back in. Then we can adjust the plug there just so it moves up and down. Just so we get sealed and there's enough of a gap for the water to drain out. Then we can get the water back on, give it a test and there we go. That's another job all done.